Hello everyone, welcome back to another Greek Gift Chess video. I'm Alex. And I'm Phil. And today we're going to bring you guys our top 5 favorite attacking chess openings. Have you ever been stuck at the same rating, playing the same op openings and getting no results? Watch this video till the end and find out how to blow your opponents off the board with these 5 aggressive openings. We picked these openings because we have personal experience with them and because we believe that they are easy to learn and do not require heavy memorization of variations. So, to start off, we're going to be showing you guys the King's Indian Defense. This opening is one of the most dynamic openings you can play against d4 to get your um, opponent out of their comfortable positional game into a more tactical one. After knight f6, we're going to see c4, d6, knight c3, g6, and white is going to take the full center with e4. Now, we have fianchetto our bishop to g7, and now have reached the main position of the King's Indian Defense. In this video, we're going to be showing you guys the move knight f3, but there's also bishop e2, f4, and f3, which we'll be covering in our upcoming video. So, after knight f3, castles, we're going to be trying to break against white's over um, extended center with e5 or c5. So, for example, after bishop e2, already we can hit him with um, e5, and then after castles, knight c6. Now, oftentimes, white will take even more center space with d5, but here we can bring our knight back, and after b4, you're already seeing both sides' of his plans develop where white is going to be trying to beat us on the queen side, and we're going to be going for king side attack. So after knight e8... This is preparing f5, a key idea we saw in our Kalashnikov video. Sometimes going back is the best way to go forwards, because here you're preparing, like we said, a knight slingshot, where you expand with your pawns and then bring the knight in afterward. Exactly. So in this position, you will be going for something like f4, and then we can bring the knight back, maybe even play g5, and bring this knight to, knight to g6. So... We're going to go into heavier details in our upcoming video, but these are some of the key ideas that you guys need to get started playing the King's Indian Defense. And just know that you can get some beautiful games with this attacking chess, uh, flying attacks. All right, next opening, two knights defense. This is something I've played personally, and I really like it because it throws uh, fried liver players really off their guard with an attacking opening. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, white plays the Italian opening, and now we have knight f6. Oftentimes, white thinks, oh wow, this is a blunder, I can just get my fried liver from knight g5. However, here we trick white and play the move d5. This cuts off the light square bishop, and it no longer attacks f7. After e takes d5 and knight a5, we're attacking the bishop and attacking white center, which is already crumbled. Now, white does have this check, bishop e5, c6, and after an exchange on c6, white can retreat the bishop. However, here we're going to be developing our pieces to active squares. We have bishop to d6 and then bishop b7. Oftentimes, you're going to want to play c5 and c4, which will not only attack this bishop, but also give us room to bring this knight back. So, as an example variation, you can play something like knight d5, attacking the knight, and after it retreats, play bishop d6, start your development. Castles, knight f4, already putting pressure on this bishop. And let's say white just plays a normal retreating move, like bishop e2. Well, here you explode with tactics after knight takes g2. Now, after king takes, we're going to be covering all these variations in our next video, and you're going to see why you can use the two knights defense to absolutely wreck your opponents, who just think that the fried liver is an easy win. Up next, an opening that I've played throughout all my life, the Evans Gambit. Um, it starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and now another Italian. However, this time we're on the white side. And after bishop c5, we get to attack black with a move b4. This move gambits a wing pawn in order to take control of the full center. By the way, this is not something that just beginner players play. This is also something that's been played by some of the best players of all time, like Bobby Fischer, Gary Kasparov, and Hikaru Nakamura to get some beautiful attacking games. This is a super rich chess opening, and um, many players throughout all of history have played it. So for example, after bishop takes b4, we already start striking at black with moves like c c3 and then d4. White has gained a huge center and is going to be continuing their rapid development and so, for example, after takes, we gamble another pawn with castles. We don't care if black takes on c3, because after that, we have queen b3, already lasering black's king. And we're going to bring our bishop out to a3, and then taking on c3 with a knight. Some after beautiful that, beautiful open lines. Exactly. The rooks have their beautiful open lines down the center, and black is going to be under a lot of pressure. Even if you don't regain your pawn, the peace activity makes up for it, and that is something that we're going to be showing you guys very soon. Next up, another gamut that I've played throughout my entire career is the smith moore gamut. This, is arises, this arises after e4, c5, and d4. 
Here, white avoids all of the um, heavy memorization that's needed in Sicilian lines and just gets black out of their comfort zone with d4. Instead of black attacking you down the queen side, you're going to be the one bringing the fight to black. So after takes, c3, and takes, we now develop our knight and have gained the open c file for our rook. The piece placement is going to be super natural with moves like bishop c4, knight f3. Like, as you can see, we're targeting this, sorry, this weak f7 square. And um, we're going to get quick castling, um, bishop development, and everything comes naturally. For example, a natural move here for black is d6, after which black already loses to the move e5. After knight takes, you'll just take with the knight and detonate bishop takes f7, king takes, and queen takes d8. Black, uh, white has already won a queen by move 10, and this opening is absolutely going to stun your opponents. Another example, after e5, um, let's say black tries to take with a d-pawn. Well, now you can trade queens after knight takes, play knight c5. This runs the fork on c7. And so, super simple move. Phil, what would you play here? I guess I'd just play uh, king d7 because it just protects the fork. Nothing you can do after that. Right? Exactly. So a lot of players here play king d7 and then just lose in two moves to the beautiful checkmate with two knights. Knight takes c5, king back, and knight to c7, checkmate. That is a double climb move. And so this is why we think you guys can start picking up the smith more gamut and getting some beautiful games with it. Finally. So this is the knight f6 Scandi. This is something I like to play because it's also light on theory memorization and you get some really dynamic positions with it while also throwing your opponent off their guard. So normally in the Scandi, um, or the Scandinavian, black will take with the queen. But this just gives white easy development and it's known to be um, a better opening for white. Queen, um, black's queen gets harassed and white just gains a a development advantage. So we um, propose that you guys start your development immediately with knight to f6. So oftentimes white will play c6 and try and hold on uh, c4 and try and hold on to the pawn. But here black can just play c6. This cracks back at um, white's center. And after knight f3, we play e5. The name of the game controlling the d4 square. And after knight c3, we can actually play e4 ourselves. Um, knight g5 and bishop f5. Black has a super strong center. It's going to get easy development with bishop to c5, queen to e7, and bring your other rook to the d-file. Black's um, moves are super simple and easy to understand, and after a move like bishop to e2, um, we can already play h6, drive knight, white's knight backwards, and then take it, destroy the, the king side cover, and easy development from here. Yeah, white's pieces are just looking wacky in this position, while uh, black just gets some easy natural development. So, these are going to be the five openings that we think you guys can learn to get some attacking games. And don't worry if you didn't see enough variations in this video, because in our upcoming five next videos, we're going to be going in-depth to each one of these openings and showing you guys some strategic ideas and some variations that you can use in your own games. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please subscribe or leave a comment. Uh, we'll be making more of these kinds of chess videos in the future. And for now, this is Alex. And I mean, <laughs> Phil. And Alex. Signing off. And we'll see you guys.